Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Unashamedly Human podcast. My name is Jackie Ford. I am a coach, mentor, and trainer living in Scotland, but working globally. Today, I have three guests. I'm just getting a wee bit greedy. You know, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, but today I thought, oh, hell, I'm going to have three. And the reason that I decided to have these three gorgeous women with me was because I saw something they were advertising on Facebook, a meeting for women to go to, to find out and become more confident in their relationships, to find out more about relationships and their ability to have better relationships. And then I saw the thing that really appealed to me even more and was that one of the speakers was going to talk about the hell that people can go through. I mean, I know you're all going to be talking about the hell, but specifically something about relationships. I'm finding more and more people are talking about, writing about, understanding. Um, so today I have three wise, beautiful women coaches from the USA. Linda Ford, Lana Bastianuti, and Del Addy Jones. And I am so delighted to have these three women with me, especially because this is something I think you guys need to pay attention to. Even if you're in a nice relationship with a partner or a loved one, because there's always something new to learn. And I think, especially as women, we think we've learned and then we forget to go deeper. And it's in that going deeper that we actually evolve and grow. So welcome Dale, Lana and Linda. Thank, Thank you. you Jackie. Pleasure to be here. Lovely, lovely Good. to see you again. No it's lovely. Now ladies where did this idea come from? What is it you guys have been seeing? Because I know that Lana and Linda you've been working previously on mainly women and confidence and I recognize that's quite a key thing in relationships. So how did this come about? Yeah, uh, do, do you want me to get going here? Go for it. Okay, yeah, so as you said, Lana and I, you know, we wrote a book about women and confidence. And what has really amazed us in our work as coaches over the years, Jackie, is, you know, we come across so many amazing women who are educated, qualified, really well put together. Um, they're really smart and capable. And yet... <laughs> When it comes to relationships, especially, um, they they just kind of fall to pieces, you know, or they act as if they're back in seventh grade. And it's it's like there's this disconnect between, you know, who they really are and how they show up in relationships. And so, um, you know, we wanted to kind of uh, really bridge that, help them bridge that gap, you know, close that gap. And, and, and have a, an experience of dating that just felt a lot more full of ease and joy rather than the stress and anxiety that women are feeling, you know? So that's really where it came from. And if I could just piggyback on that, um, we did a love series, a free love series. We, we take these themes and, and then we interview different experts in these areas. And one of the experts that we talked to was Dell. And <laughs> her topic, we knew she had this wealth of information and knowledge and experience around codependency and gaslighting and narcissism. And we were so fascinated by that because so many women in relationship don't have a clue, don't realize what's happening or that they're even in an un unhealthy relationship. And so we had this amazing conversation with Del. We felt like we knew her for years. And, and from that burst this new idea, you know what? We've got to do a workshop for women specifically about relationships and what they don't understand, what they need to know, some of these myths that are out there and also these red flags that Dell is so good at pointing out and helping women through. And mm -hmm. Dell, maybe you wanna add. <laughs> <laughs> and I was delighted to say yes, cause um, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, we've all had our own experiences, but you know, as Jackie was just saying before we started recording that, um, how we feel about ourselves is is so important that's the first relationship and so many of us when we're dating we're looking outside of us as you know like you know who are we going to find but my god if we haven't healed that relationship within ourselves especially if we 
you know, grew up with um, in trauma and have codependency issues or thinking and beliefs, we, we are never going to find a healthy relationship until we we work on that. So I'm really, really happy that you both um, invited me to be a part of it. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's a lovely little teaser, okay. <laughs> but let's go deeper. Mm-hmm. How many of you three have had hellish relationships? I mean, Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the key point, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's the key yeah. point. There isn't a woman out there who hasn't had a relationship, either with herself or with another woman or a man or whatever, that hasn't hurt her in some way. And often we don't go back to that relationship to heal. We just move on. So if you, somebody could talk a bit more to that that would be really interesting yeah you know for me Jackie um I this may sound really weird but from the age of 16 when I first started dating to the age of 45 I was never ever without a relationship Mm -hmm. now uh, let me just explain that I I used to hop from one to the other make sure I had one to go into and, and what I have seen over the years, especially coming to this understanding now, as I look back on all that was going on with me and relationships, is I, I was always thinking that my happiness, and Del has already addressed this, uh, my happiness was, you know, was going to come from a man. It was something outside of me. And so... So through all those difficult years, I had some good relationships too, but I can see so clearly now that that journey I had was such a beautiful way of opening me up to who I really was. You know, it took that long for me to discover that, you know, my happiness, my sense of joy and well-being, um, it, it wasn't coming from any of those men. You know, and, and I had to go through that journey to discover that. And it's a beautiful thing, you know, so there's, it's not like I look back and have regrets about what I went through. Um, but it, it really has been the, uh, the catalyst, I would say, for me coming to really know my value, my worth mm-hmm. as a human. I love that. I love that, Linda. It, the thing I love about that is, it set you off on a journey of self-discovery. But to mm-hmm. some women, it doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if, Dale? No, I was gonna say, yes, sometimes, you know, a, a lot of the women I work with are so traumatized after coming out of a narcissistic relationship that they, they swear off any mm-hmm. other relationship. But I just wanna piggyback on what, what Linda was saying and me too. Oh, I was always hopping from one relationship to the next, always thinking that love was coming from the outside in and I felt loveless. So it was always like that bottomless pit of, of love me, love me, give me what I don't have inside of me. But what I really saw after a very long term, extremely painful relationship was um, at the end of that, I saw that you know our outer world reflects our inner world and being treated as a, you know, it was an abusive relationship on many levels. But what I saw so clearly, well, not so clearly, (laughs) it took me a while, but after coming out of that, I really saw that, that this person I was with was just completely reflecting back to me how I felt about myself. He treated me as if I was less than, and I believed I was less than. So it was really the outer world reflecting the inner and, um, and again, just like you said, Linda, it's all thinking that the, the security and the love and the confidence was coming from the inside, I'm sorry, the outside in. And, and I wasn't, I mean, I was empty inside. And that relationship was the catalyst for me to really just go, oh my God, can I, and I, I get like you, I had, I had wonderful relationships too. But I, I wasn't interested in those. It's like that old, I think it's Groucho Marx that said, you know, anybody that would have me in their club is not worth being a part of that club. It was the same thing with me. I had men that loved and had adored me. And I was like, get out of the way. I want the really difficult ones, the ones that are unavailable. And, you know, so 
it was really interesting. And I really had to, st I did, you know, I stopped dating for a year. I just, it doesn't sound very long, but I really, really like absolutely time alone, time to heal, time to really um, look within. So yeah, it was a catalyst for me too, and a, a wonderful one. So. Anna. I, I had a very different experience than these two lovely ladies. And that's um, what makes this beautiful. Is I know. Yeah. I, know. Uh -huh. um, I actually met my husband very early on in my life. Um, so it wasn't a, I, did, I didn't have this outside in version, but what I did have was a sense of losing a sense of myself mm. in the relationship and not understanding about boundaries at all that that took a really long time and sometimes I'm still challenged by it so um that was my learning curve because here was somebody that I absolutely loved and loved me but it was so interesting how our our relationship because we were young and we kind of grew mm. grew up together in many ways but in the in the beginning I fell for all the myths out there um about what love is and oh you gotta test them and so I would do these little dramatic things to test them and it's like it, it was just ridiculous and inside the thing that I always loved was inside I knew I knew like this is silly this is this is not showing you anything mm -hmm. this this is pushing you further apart versus bringing you together, which is your natural inclination anyway. So it was so ironic, you know, how the very thing I wanted was what I was pushing away by doing these little games that I thought that's how you know. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really, it's been a really, like any marriage, it's got its ups and downs. And, you know, you, you have moments where you're like, what was I thinking? And then, oh my God, I love this guy so much. And all of that is so normal. It's mm -hmm. so normal. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's been a real learning curve for me as well. I'm laughing inside because I've had a bit of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I loved what you were bringing to the table. I just thought it's so relatable, incredibly relatable. And the women so far that you've had on these little, you know, like, like taster courses that you've done, what are you finding? Is there a theme? Is there a theme that keeps, a, keeps emerging or themes? A theme that keeps what? What's themes that keep emerging? You know, that there, there's all oh, the emerging. Yeah. Yeah. There's always. Yeah, out. I think I think one of the themes that I have noticed is and one of the biggest complaints, women, they tend to lose themselves in a relationship right in the early part and, and also what Lana was just saying about even if you're in a marriage you can kind of lose yourself but especially when you're in the throes of dating or an early relationship you know women are really onto the fact that they do lose themselves and I'll give you a few examples of how that plays out you know you kind of start dating and then you drop your friends and your life and everything becomes about him and um, you, you tend to kind of like, when you're with him, it, you wanna just make it all about him. And you're afraid to kind of really give your, uh, give your true, show up in your true, you know, your true self out of fear that there may be something in you that he doesn't like. Um, so it's all about people pleasing. That was a big, that's a big one with women. You know, it's like, I have to get him to like me. And there's this fear of just being um, unapologetically yourself, you know, and just knowing that who you are is okay. So women are very, they're, they're onto that. They know that they fall into that trap. I used to fall into it a lot. Um, and so it's like some of the work that we do is, is we want to kind of help women see what's actually going on there and help them regain their power back, you know, and to show up unapologetically mm -hmm. and to know that who they are is, is enough. So, um, so just to be aware that, that that's a dynamic that's going on that creates a very uneven relationship, you know, and it also kind of, um, makes women show up as, as very needy and grasping. You know, that's the energy that they're putting out there. So 
it's just like being aware. It's like being being able to see what's actually going on in that dynamic. I wonder how often men feel that way in relationships. Um, from what I've read, Jackie, it's the same. And and again, women have this idea that men aren't suffering in relationships, mm -hmm. uh, that they're not going through what they don't have the insecurities, that they're all bad boys. It's not true at all. The research that I've done is that they have the same problems that we have, the same insecurities. And, you know, there's only a, sh a small percentage of men who are, Dell will test to this, the narcissists, the, you know, the gaslighters. But um, most of them were, were, they all are the same, same human need. They want to be loved. They want to love. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I have heard anyway. Uh, I, I believe that. Yeah, and just, um, yeah, I mean, and when we talk about narcissism and codependency, it's not just men by any means. It can be women too, especially in today's society. I think... Um, I, I think there's also cultures we grow up in where women are, are, are taught to be the pleasers, you know, it's a, it's a dirty word to be called a bee, you know. Um, but I also think that when you were talking about being, you know, people pleasers, and I think sometimes if you've had a sort of a wounded, a wounded childhood, and you, you fear abandonment, you know, you can't be abandoned as an adult, but as a child, you can be. So you learn those coping strategies like people pleasing, everybody, everybody love me, I'll be needless and wantless so that you don't abandon me. And you can carry that on unconsciously into your adulthood and into those relationships. And you, you pretend sometimes to be needless and wantless just to sort of secure the relationship. But if you're going to show up like that, you're going to attract somebody that likes to take, <laughs> you know, so you've got an overgiver and then you've got somebody that loves to receive and it gets to be those one one way relationships. So I love what you're saying, Linda. It's so important to show up authentically real. I have needs and wants like anybody else. And, you know, um, this is who I am. You either like me or not. But sometimes we grow up believing that we can control everybody around us and we can make everybody like us. And then we feel good about that. And it's just, it's such a waste of time and energy. I mean, when, when you show up authentically, you know, yeah, some people might not like it. Great, you've eliminated people that you're not a match for. But when you try and please everybody, nobody knows who they're even with at that point. And then when you try and sort of show, show up in the relationship after that, you know, the, you're changing the rules. They're like, well, that's not how you, you know, you didn't present like that in the beginning. You know, how come you like that now? So it's really important to show up authentically who we are, warts and all. So, Can I just add to that, Jackie? Because uh, I love what Del's saying here, because this is the biggest, this is how women overcomplicate and men overcomplicate relationships is that they think they have to do all kinds of maneuvers say you know be a certain way talk a certain way to get him to love them and um it's actually it's actually the opposite <laughs> it's like if you just take all that away and you just be yourself and show up as yourself it's actually the secret source for attracting the right partner because like Dell says when you get really clear about who you are what your needs are, what your core values are, who you really want to hang out with in life, then that road to finding that person becomes so much faster, swifter. I mean, I spent years just kind of circumambulating and it was like, I wanted to go to New York, but I took the wrong route to it, you know? I took the long way. So, if women just kind of settle into who they are and appreciate themselves and and just stick by, be their own best friends and and, you know, just get clarity about that, then that's the most circuitous route to finding a great relationship. <laughs> it's Lana, very uncomplicated. No, yeah, Lana, I keep hearing my love. Um, Women think they have to be a certain way. Women think this is the way to go. Women think that this is the man for them. Tell me about that, because this word think keeps coming up. Yeah, there's a lot of thinking, isn't there? 
Um, and uh, I mean, that's how we experience everything. We all know that through our thinking, but sort of touching on what both Linda and Dell have said is the secret sauce is definitely being yourself grounded in who you really are, knowing that in your bones. And a lot of people, there's, there's resistance to that in that they don't understand that. It's like, well, how do I know who I am? Like, what do you mean? Be myself, be authentic. I don't even know what that means. Um, essentially, one way of seeing that is, are you present? Are you present in the moment? Or are you in your head thinking, oh, right, okay, my arm has to be here. This is my best side. I need to do this. Oh, what's he doing? Okay, I need to compensate for that. Oh, he doesn't like that. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do that. Like that's somebody that's in their head. They're not present. They're not grounded and showing up as is. Mm -hmm. And so that other person is responding to a, a completely, to, to all this insecure thinking. And it's no wonder then there's this, uh, like, who are you? Like, I don't, I don't need, this is not the same person I met, you know, two months ago. You're, you're all everywhere else, but here with me now. And the other thing with presence is you're either in your thinking, you know, oh, what can I do to please them? Or you're in your memories of, oh, remember my ex-boyfriend, he didn't like it. He said that I should never do this. So now I've got to make sure I never do this with this person, or this is how they, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. So it's being aware of where are you? Where are you? Are you actually in the relationship? Are you in your body? Are you grounded? Or are you just off in thinking? And it's so obvious, isn't it? When you, when you reflect now where you all are now in your relationships and looking back on when you were dating years ago or with the wrong person, et cetera, you can see that now, as they say, hindsight's always twenty twenty, and you've all gone on this depth of exploration <laughs> to evolve and grow and, and, and find out, you know, more about yourself and, and how you work. Boundaries keeps coming up to me. Boundaries. Somebody talked to me about boundaries because that's what I have found has been the single biggest thing for me is knowing what my human preferences are. And it's not a fixed thing, it's in the moment. I'll tolerate this, I won't tolerate that, but it's not completely fixed. But it's made my relationships healthier, both with men, women, and my children. So I would imagine one of you would want to talk about that. Okay, Perfect, boundaries, yeah. is, <laughs> boundaries is a big thing. I'll, I'll start it off in okay. terms of what I've seen. So, oh my gosh. I didn't have boundaries for a long time. I didn't know there were boundaries. I didn't exactly have great role models in this regard. So I didn't understand about that. And also I didn't want anybody upset with me. So um, I, I just was give, just give, mm -hmm. give, give, give. What was interesting though, was I did have a, a point at which nah, mm, no, not crossing that. But what would happen is because I didn't understand boundaries, I would become resentful. I would then like, oh, you know, mm, I'd have a whole story and then resentful. And I would be carrying around this resentment that the other person wasn't even aware of because she'd never had a problem before. Like, what's the issue? Yeah. And so it creates this big mess of complication where I'm having one relationship with this person and they're having a completely different relationship. And so it, it's, it took me a long time to understand what boundaries are, what it means to me. And it isn't, a lot of people think it's about controlling that person, that other person, and it's not. It's okay, you be you, you, you do that. But when that happens, that's a boundary for me. And I'm gonna do this then, like, I'm gonna leave. Like when that ha that's not okay. That's a boundary. I'm, I'm out. I'm going in the other room, or I'm, I'm not participating in whatever you're <laughs> suggesting. So you know, it's it's really clear that it isn't manipulation. It isn't control. It's just being really clear of what's okay for you, as Jackie, as you're saying, like in that moment, that can change. Yeah. Um, and we're very fluid that way. But there are some hard 
like okay. knows mm -hmm. and and be aware of those and respect those I love what you're saying there because I used to always feel three strikes and you're out but some guys only got to one because <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, that was a non-negotiable completely non-negotiable passive aggressiveness comes up as well but let's do the boundary thing first and then go somebody can talk about passive aggressiveness I'd like to say about boundaries that there's a real myth out there that um you know you hear it a lot like uh, oh they crossed my boundaries and actually the truth is is that we are the ones that break our own boundaries yeah it's all it's we're the ones that are doing that you know and if you can really begin to see that where where you know it's just because if somebody crosses your boundary, it's just that you haven't been strong enough to hold it up yourself. And so it's really good to see what's going on, you know, the, the, the real truth of, of what's going on. So mm -hmm. that's what I had to really look at. It took a, it takes courage to look at these things, to look at yourself and see where you're not showing up and Absolutely. where you're not being authentic with yourself, you know, which is why, you know, I always, when I'm coaching women, it's like, one of the things that I try and establish is that we have to try and be our own best friend. That's what the term that I use. And so when I let somebody, when I don't hold up my own boundary, it's a, it's an example of me not being my own best friend. I don't have my own back, you know? Mm -hmm. Del, do you do want to service? Yeah. It's a service to the other person, you know, like it's, it's, um, it's not really being honest and in, in integrity with yourself. And then it's very confusing for that other person. And it does them no favors because you're, you're back and forth waffling and, and not clear. And you think you're just being nice, but in fact, you're, you're not, you're not being nice to yourself and you're not being nice to the other person either mm -hmm. or kind. I'd rather say kind actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah me um well i had probably the most porous boundaries ever it was always about for me you know if i was in a relationship that i was invested in that i thought i needed to keep at all costs my boundaries were sort of all over the place doesn't mean i wouldn't complain and put my hand on the door and threaten to leave but you know we teach other people how to treat us and because my boundaries were always so sort of you know, movable. Um, and again, no blame on the other person. I was the one that was in my head thinking, gosh, if I stick to this, the relationship might come to an end and I can't bear that. So I'm going to just threaten <laughs> and, yes. and not follow through. Um, and so, yeah, it just, it's really, um, and again, it was coming from a totally, you know, innocent misunderstanding that my that my security or my source of love was coming from that other person and that I believed I had to hold on to that at all costs. And that might even be extended to my children before I became healthy too. You know, it's like, I didn't want to lose their love and affection. So I, I sort of moved my boundaries around too much. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really interesting one. And it's, as I said, just purely born out of that misunderstanding that there's something on the outside of us that we need and we want to keep at all costs. And um, so, yeah, that was my experience with boundaries. And um, yeah, I, I have very healthy boundaries now and there's no threats and it's just like, you know, I, cause I'm not afraid of losing anything anymore. You know, I'm not afraid. So, so yeah, that's my experience. I think that's the key, Del. It's like, mm -hmm. it's that fear that you're not gonna be okay mm -hmm. if you hold a boundary and somebody then leaves or does something you don't like. There's that deep fear that oh, I'm not gonna be okay if that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's that insecurity about that. And that is the misunderstanding. What keeps coming to mind, ladies, is empaths and narcissists. Oh. <laughs> the empath who gives and gives and gives and can see the true potential of the other person when the other person will never see that for themselves. Yet the empath keeps giving and keeps giving and keeps giving in the hope that. Dale, I'd love you to speak to that, please. Uh, it's so funny. I'm, I think um, 
you know, whether we call it an empath or a codependent. See, codependency has a bit of a dirty word to it. People don't want to identify with that. Whereas empath has that lovely mystical yeah. sound. Yeah. Mystical. Yeah. People will go, oh, I'm an empath. I'm not codependent. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the thing is, we are basically, um, you know, the whole thing about being codependent, the sort of um, sensitivity to others. Again, it's, it's often originates in childhood that you're hypersensitive to your environment. So empaths or codependents are hypersensitive to people. Um, they're very caring, very nurturing. And again, often to secure love, but whatever is driving them. And yes, you know, there is a tender heart in there that sees the beauty in everybody. And we've, you know, we've, we're brought up to believe, and oh my God, we're spoon fed beauty in the beast. You know, if you love them enough, they can transform. And, um, <laughs> and we feel empowered about that. You know, we, we like to be needed and wanted and, and feel value from, from nurturing another into their fullest potential. But, you know, I always say, especially in the three principles world, we can have a little bit of a, well, you know, it's just our thinking, so we should be able to tolerate anything. And, you know, my thing is, you can see the loving essence in, in everybody. But, you know, we're also human. We, you, we're spiritual and human rolled into one. And if somebody is behaving in a certain way that is not in alignment with, with how you want to live your life, say they're being abusive, either physically or, or verbally or whatever is going on, you can love that person and you can know that they have resilience in them just as it's in you and well-being and wisdom. They have equal amounts to you. So they will be okay. You don't need to save them or rescue them. But, you know, you, as Linda said, you need to be your own best friend. And if you are in a situation that is harmful or painful, then you can leave with love. You don't have to vilify them and make them a bad person. You can still love them, but love yourself equally and, and not be, allow yourself to be in an abusive environment or situation. That's a really critical point, Del. And I think even in the, you know, sort of the principles world, it's a parody. It's an absolute parody to do, oh, it's just your thinking. And I, you know, it's, it's, you're human you know instinctively what you're meant to do. And I think the problem is that women talk themselves out of that. Absolutely. Because they think they have to be another way. I, I always say to people, I like you and I love you, but it doesn't mean to say I want to go naked camping with you in the wild. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, yeah. enough. you know, there's certain things I'll tolerate and there's certain things that I won't. And being able to say that, as you've all, you know, sort of said beautifully, being able to say that with nothing on it, no, mm. I don't want to do that. And there's I love what you're stop. saying, Jackie. There's yeah, a that's beautiful. Stop there, you know, and it always, a thank you, Linda, and always, always interesting to me that why does it take so long for us to get to this point? Well, it's like what Lana says, at the bottom of it all is fear, right? Mm. We're afraid, like I grew up in a family uh, where I was the caretaker, you know, uh, and I turned out to be the biggest codependent. And I always felt like I had to just take care of people, make sure that they love me, right? So, so it, it comes from that. It com comes from this place of we're just afraid. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of what's, like for me, it was like, I was afraid of being, on my own without a man and and when I actually got to that place I realized that oh that was just that's not true you know I mean I actually had a wonderful time living on my own when I actually separated from someone for the first time and and I realized that I've been living in this bubble of thought that that said you know you know you've got to be with someone in order to be safe and happy and and I realized that it wasn't true all those years you know that just fell away and I think I love what you were saying there Jackie about just having the power to say to someone like the one of the most empowering things that I ever said to a guy was look I love you but I don't want to live with you anymore and and I thought that there was a time where I thought if I said something like that, the whole earth would fall off its hinge, you know, 
like off its axis. And I thought that would have been like a devastating thing. But when I actually said it at that time in my life, it just was the most powerful thing I said, I had said to myself. And what it did is that it, it kind of ushered in this whole other life that was just waiting for me to step into. You know, I there were doors opening for me that I never never even knew were there mm. to this freer life. And so, it, like Lana says again, it's just the bottom is we're just afraid, and it's all because we're thinking in a certain way about someone or our situation. Uh, so yeah. I think I was the opposite. I was very emotionally avoidant. You know, if I got too close to someone, didn't, didn't, nope, 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 nope. And I would run because, you know, I just, I don't want to have to deal with things. This is just rubbish. It's like, next. Yeah, interesting. And it took me until I met my husband till, you know, I didn't have those thoughts about whatever because the energy between us was just so right. It was an unspoken thing. It was it was a, a spiritual thing. It was, you know, there was no game playing. There was no noise. It, there was nothing. It was just like, but I can only see that in hindsight. That's why you call it what, Mr. Lovely? You're Mr. Mr. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Lovely. But he, you know, again, he wouldn't have been the kind of guy I would have went for in my 20s, you know, at all. But... He, when I met him, it was the right time for me to meet him. And I'd done all my, whatever I was meant to do. So I always say to people, there's time. There's always time. You think of Kamala Harris, for God's sake. She met her husband, she was 49. Yeah, yeah. I met mine when I was 46. Yeah, there you it go. It took me that long. Uh-huh. I met my uh-huh. husband when I was met mine when I was 50. Okay, you win. Oh. You win. You win. <laughs> you win. But, but, but uh-huh. this is what, you know, what I'm, I'm sort of pointing to is, that we all have these stories about how we're meant to be in relationship, how we avoid pain in relationship, how we run towards pain in our relationships. So again, this is why I love what you guys are doing because you're opening up that huge can of worms and saying to women, we're going to talk about relationship. Mm. And when you're in that discussion, I, I mean, I can only just imagine the kind of things that you guys are going to talk to that will be so healing for, for your audience. So I love, love, love what you're doing. So can you tell me a bit more about the event and tell our listeners a bit more about the event when it's happening, blah, blah, blah. Do we have the dates in front of us, Lana? <laughs> it's 9, 10 and 11. December, December. Mm-hmm. 9, December. 10 and 11. Um, which is a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I believe. Just gonna throw on my glasses to make yeah. sure. Yeah, and I, it's um, yeah, it's ninety minute workshops for three days in a row, and then we're giving a bonus Q and A mm-hmm. day on the following Monday, uh, where people can ask any outstanding questions they may have, or maybe get a little bit of coaching around some issue. Um, we're kind of leaving it open for for them to make make do with it what they'd like. Um, I just want to verify. Yeah, I believe 9, 10, and 11. And if they can't join live, it's all recorded. So yeah. they can, you know, they can sign up for it anyway and just listen on their own. So, yeah, we, we cover all of it. We cover all that, you know, getting to the bottom of your self-worth. Um, Dell is going to do a whole section on how to really notice the red flags mm-hmm. that you should in, in partners, right? And, uh, and then we've got a wonderful whole unit on how to make friends. And this is something that a lot of women might find a little bit uh, hard to understand. How to make friends with rejection. Because it's a, <laughs> it's a whole new take on how to, sh- how to really see, and to see what's going on with rejection. So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff to share. Yeah, it sounds brilliant. Dale, were you going to say something there? No, no, just, well, it was, it was carrying on to something you said earlier. It was, um, you know, often, often people think that, you know, they're available for a relationship and they're ready for intimacy. And, and the reality is 
if you're after unavailable men, yeah. then you might want to stop and look and think if you're available. But that, really that, available. But that, that was it exactly. I thought the men were unavailable emotionally, but it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a big so one. I would, I would choose men that were married. I would choose men, you know, that, that, that I didn't really want to be with, you know, because it was me. It wasn't them. It was me. And it's always... You know, and that's the kicker and being able to see that with humor and love yeah. instead of judgment and anger is, is, I imagine, another one of these directions that you're going to take the women in. So um, I will put all the details in the podcast uh, with a link for you all if anybody's interested, which I'm sure you will be to, to attend this. I think it's $99 for the, the three sessions. Is that right? Uh, 70, 79 early bird. Special early bird. Wow. And the early yeah. bird finishes? Um, uh, December 30th or November 30th? Uh, we should have like that. Days, <laughs> we have the links below. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. At, look at the links below. These these women yeah. are so unattached to the outcome. I, of I know, day. lovely. But it is. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, December 9th, tenth, and eleventh at three p.m. Eastern time. Original price ninety nine, but early bird special is seventy nine. Let me see. It ends December first. The early bird special. Fantastic. Thanks, Lana. <laughs> and even if you can't make it, you can access the recordings yeah. afterwards, which is just yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Dale, Lana, and Linda, for coming on to the Unashamedly Human podcast. Uh, it's been a delight to see you all. I didn't think we'd manage to get the four of us on a call and not have chaos. I'm very I impressed. I am so impressed. <laughs> Next time, we'll do it by five. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, for this. Yeah. Oh, you're Thank so you, lovely. Jackie. We love hanging out with you. No, yeah. It's, it, it, yeah, I love hanging out with you guys too. But, uh, you know, what I really, really love is seeing women who've evolved and grown sharing what they know to be true with other women. Because God knows we all need someone to point us in a direction when we're lost so I absolutely commend all of you for putting this together and just doing it you know just getting out there and doing it and I wish you every success oh thank you Jackie thank you so much thank you